In this video, we would like to maximize z equals to 2x1 plus 12x2 plus xx3 subject to all these constraints with x1, x2, and x3 to be greater than or equal to 0. Now, the constraints consist of less than or equal to symbol. So, for each of these constraints, we would like to add a select variable so that those constraints can be stated as an equation. So this is the corresponding system in standard form. Then we would like to write this system into the tabular form as follows. We observe that S1 occurs only in the first constraint and with coefficient positive 1. Likewise, S2 occurs only in the second constraint with coefficient 1 and S3 only occurs in constraint 3 with coefficients equals to positive 1. They are called basic variables. In this system, we can take x1, x2, and x3 to be 0, s1 equals to 100, s2 equals to 80, s3 equals to 300, and z equals to 0. However, we notice that this solution is not yet optimal. We can conclude this by observing whether or not there are negative coefficients in any of the variables in the zeroth row, which is the row representing the objective function. We pick the one which is the most negative, and the corresponding column is the key column. In some reference book, it is also called the pivot column. As we have picked the column representing x2 to be the key column, it means that x2 is going to replace one of the basic variables here. Now, we focus on the key column and among those constant that is occurring at the constraints equation, we focus on those which are positive. And for those which are positive, we take the ratio of the corresponding ci divided by that particular number. For example, for the first row, we will have 100 divided by positive 2 to get 50, and we can ignore the second row because this number is negative, and for the third row, we would have 300 divided by 5 to get 60. For these two numbers, which are now positive, we choose the one which is the minimum. So, in our case, the first row is selected as the key row. This means that we are going to replace S1 by X2 to be the new basic variable. Our next procedure is to rewrite the first row so that this number here in the key row and the key column should be 1 and all the other numbers in the key column should be 0. This can be done by row operations as in Gaussian elimination. So first, we would like to change the key row such that the number here is 1. This can be done by dividing the original row 1 by 2 to get the new row 1. And this is the corresponding new row 1. Now, I still write it as R1 instead of R1 prime because I would like to keep all those notation for row to be row 0 up to row 3 so that it is prepared for the next row operations. But please notice that this is already the R1 prime that I indicate here. For the other row, our target is to apply a suitable multiple of R1 prime into the other rows so that the other numbers here in the key column becomes zero. You can make use of the new row one in order to do this row operation to make all other values in the key columns to be zero. For example, in order to make this negative 12 to be zero, we can apply 12 times the new row 1 to the original row 0 so that this becomes 0 and all other numbers will be changed. For the second row, 
we can apply trace times the new row 1 into the original row 2 to get the new row 2. Whereas for the third row, we can multiply negative 5 times new row 1 plus the original row 3 to make this number to be 0 and all other numbers will be changed correspondingly. So we will come up to the system as follows. Now we can observe that in the objective function, the original right hand side value increases from 0 to positive 600. And for all other right hand side values in the constraints, it is still not negative. If it happened that there are some negative values in this CI in the constraints, it is an indication that we have done some careless mistakes. This value should be non-negative because when we perform the row operations, we have picked the key row to be the row which has the smallest positive ratios here. So when we perform row operation, we are applying a certain multiple of this row into the other rows. So this computation shouldn't give any negative values here. Now, we can decide whether the solutions given from this system is optimal or not by observing among those variables in the objective functions whether there are coefficients which is still negative. In our case, the solution given by this system is still not yet optimal because the coefficients of x3 in the zero row is still negative, and this is the only negative values among all those variables in the objective function. So the column representing x3 is now the key column. And it also means that x3 is going to replace one of the variables here to be a basic variable. So x3 is the key column. And among those numbers in the constraint equation, we pick those which are positive, and for those which are positive, we consider dividing the right-hand side value of that corresponding row by that number to get the ratio and compare among this ratio which gives the minimum value. In our case, the ratio on the second row gives the minimum value, and this should be a positive number. Therefore, the second row now is the key row. This means that we would like to rewrite row 2 such that the number here should be 1 and all the other numbers in this key column should be made to be 0. This can be done by the row operation as in Gaussian elimination appropriately, similar to the previous process. So you use this method, it come up to the new system. Now, the right-hand side number in the objective function increases from the value 600 to 660, and the right-hand side value here in the constraints are all non-negative. Now, we get a new system, and in this new system, we would like to inspect whether the solution is optimal or not by checking whether there are still negative coefficients for those variables in the objective function. And in this case, all the coefficients of those variables in the objective function are no longer negative. Therefore, the solutions given by this system will be optimal. The solutions will be taking x1 equals to 0, s1 equals to 0, s2 equals to 0, they are non-basic variables. And for the basic variables, we have x2 equals to 35, x3 equals to 30, s3 equals to 5, and the corresponding value of ez will be 660. Therefore, the maximum value is 660, which is achieved by taking x1 equals to 0, x2 equals to 35, and x3 equals to 30. Now let's proceed to another example on the rationals. We would like to rewrite this optimization problem into the corresponding standard form as follows. 
Next, we rewrite this into the tabular form. We observe that among all those coefficients of the variables in the objective function, this negative 2 is the most negative. Therefore, we pick the column representing x1 to be the key column. And among those numbers in this key column in the constraint, we pick those which are positive and we calculate the ratio of ci of that corresponding row by that constant. In our case, we get two ratios which has the same number 3. We are supposed to pick the minimum of it. And in this case, you can pick any of the row here to be the key row. In the following pages, we demonstrate that no matter whether you pick the row 1 to be the key row or the row 2 to be the key row, you will come up to the same final answer. Please refer to the deduction by yourself.